everyone out there. Hopefully your weekend went well just like mine. This may be my new format for my videos. I told you guys I got new software to do videos and I can do anything I want, make any introduction, whatever. Name it, I can do it. So I'm still learning it. However, if you like this format, leave it in the comment section. If you like the one before, the one I have been using, leave it in the comment section. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Well, we have been hearing so much this morning about this hero, this customer inside this restaurant who took it upon himself when Ryan King paused for a moment to reload to rush Ryan King, tackle him and take the gun away. And police have said he saved so many lives. Chris Conti is joining me now and you had the opportunity to talk to this man, right. James Shaw. That is, is his, his name? name, James Shaw. He is 29 years old. He has a young four-year-old daughter uh, who he said he was thinking about most of the time when this was happening. Uh, we sat with James Shaw uh, just a short time ago. Only seven, eight hours have passed since this whole entire ordeal began unfolding this morning. He was trying to reload, not exactly sure, but I saw my opportunity in my window. So I took it and uh, I ran through the door as fast as I can and uh, just kind of jammed him up with the gun when it pointed down. And then we started kind of wrestling for it and scuffling and fighting for it. And um, after he, he let it go with one hand and then when he just had, had it in his other hand, I just took it and I tossed it over the, um, the counter and uh, I pretty much removed him out of the restaurant with myself and then he kind of walked off by himself. So you pushed him out of the restaurant? Yes. I mean, what were you thinking about as this was all happening? It wasn't really a, it really, really wasn't a, a, a process of thinking. It was more so of a, a, a now. Um, you have to do this now or it's not going to be if, if, if I let him load that weapon, it wasn't going to be another window. It wasn't going to be another chance. It was pretty much like shooting fish in a barrel because literally it was pretty much like this, a brick wall behind us, and there was nowhere to go. So that was not that was from when you grabbed uh, grabbed the close to, the, I guess, the barrel of the, of the gun. Um, it's actually burnt in this, I guess, this little region here. Oh, because of it had just gone, the gun yeah, had just was, gone off. Yeah, it was just so the, discharging, so... Um, it's, it's burnt pretty much up here and then it's actually wrapped here into here. So, um. Think about what you just saw. That hand, his hand is so severely burned because he grabbed the barrel of an assault rifle that had just gone off dozens of times. He didn't care. He grabbed that gun and he pulled it out of the hand of the man who was firing it. He saw his chance, Jennifer, and said, this is it. If I do not do this right now, all of these other people inside of the Waffle House are going to die. This is the gun that James, of course, grabbed. He grabbed the head of it there and managed to get it away uh, from the gunman as all of this was still unfolding. Had he not done that, you can only imagine how many other people would have lost their lives this morning. Salute to James Shaw Jr. Great instinct. Great instinct, okay? Now, if it wasn't for James Shaw Jr., it would have been a massacre. Everyone in that Waffle House would have been dead. Now, when I first heard of this story and they said Waffle House, I automatically knew it was people of color that were the victim. And I already knew the suspect was a Caucasian. Now, what's really unfortunate about this story besides innocent people dying because this nut job felt as though it was his duty to take out innocent people. But he won't be called a terrorist. And that's one of the biggest problems we have in America because white males, that commit the same crimes as Muslims are not called terrorists. This is a terrorist act. This is a terrorist act, okay? And this brother grabbed the 
bearer of the gun said, you know, and it, it was so hot. It was piping hot. It was so hot. He got severe burns. That's how hot the barrel of that gun was. And this also goes to show people of color. Other cultures, just, just like I've been telling you, other cultures, other ethnicities are gearing up for you. You are being attacked all over America. You're being attacked politically, physically, spiritually, financially. You're being attacked. And it's time for black men to stand up to the task. It's time to stand up to the task because the more you turn a blind eye, the more you believe that these people are your friend. These, pe these people are not your friend. Everyone that smiles in your face is not your friend, okay? This brother who stood up provided a blueprint for you. Now, you know, everyone is not going to rustle out a gun. However, he was reloading. He was reloading the gun, and he said, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. And in a millisecond, he was on this nut job's rear end. Not only that, this nut job is butt naked. And my thing is, why can't police officers? Catch these guys before they go into act. I'm pretty sure there are symptoms. Maybe he's seen a psychiatrist. I'm pretty sure as the information developed and come out, there were warning signs. And, you know, and people refuse to act on warning signs. Why? Because in this country, if you are a, in, or, or, excuse me, if you are a Caucasian male, if you are a, a Caucasian male, you are deemed as not a threat, not a problem. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Couldn't be farther from the truth. And it's very, very sad where this country is going and where it has went. What was it? I believe it was two years ago you had Dalen Roof going into a church praying. Going into a church praying. And massacring all those people. Now you fast forward to today, and you know, between Dalen Roof and this nut job here, there has been many, many Caucasian male shooters that is going nuts. Okay, that that is that is just completely gone nuts. Then you got this idiot butt naked running into a waffle house. In opening fire on innocent people. Innocent people. And see, the reason why I blame Donald Trump, the reason why I blame Donald Trump is because since he's been president, these Caucasian beta males have been running rampant. If they're not shooting up a school, they're shooting up a mall. If they're not shooting up a mall, they're shooting up a church. If they're not shooting up a church, they're shooting up a Waffle House. Butt naked. Butt naked. With a gun. Butt naked with a gun running into a Waffle House. Gunning everyone down. Now, many people have never been in this situation before, right? And hopefully you don't. But for this brother to act, the call of duty, a hero, what he did was heroic. And I'm glad a black male is in the news for something good, something great. This isn't the first time a black male did this, however, this is one of the few times the FBI and the police and the news media acknowledged it. 
acknowledged it. I'm also going to do a video on the police officer who handcuffed the black woman and her, you know, breast was hanging out. The video is viral. You guys seen it. But the signs are here. The signs are here for black men. Listen, these people do not like you. And this is, you know, what I've been saying on my channel since I started YouTube. These guys hate your guts. They study you. They eat, sleep, drink black men. It, 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 you know, people had a problem when I said it. Now it's so many stories of these guys attacking you that you can't even deny it now. And, I mean, I'm not saying that the people who were killed in a Waffle House, the people who were killed unjustly were all men. No. They were maybe men and women. All the facts haven't came out yet so far. However, it's, it's the man's job to stand up and say enough is enough. If he wouldn't have acted very quickly, very, very quickly, it would have been way more casualties, way more casualties. And who knows, he might not have stopped just at the Waffle House. He might have went down the road. And so what black men have to understand is people are starting to attack you as if, you know, they smell blood. They feel as though you're weak. They feel as though you're a threat. You're weak. They feel as though you're weak and you're a threat. You're a threat to their existence. Uh, you know, he might wrote a manifesto. He might say, you know, um, I'm sick of black men, you know, with our women. You know, you know, all the time, that's, that's, that's always said. Even when the blacks and Mexicans were going at it in L.A., one of the first things the Mexicans said is we better not see a black guy with our women. It, it, this, is, this is like their, their main agenda. You have to understand that. You have, they will kill you behind their women. We don't know what his problem was so far, but we do know he's a nut job. I'm pretty sure there were signs. Wherever he lived, his apartment building, there were signs. But because he's in Caucasian male, no one acted on it. Wait until this story develops. You will, they will say, well, yes, there were signs, and, you know, the police was notified. He's seen a, a psychiatrist. He even went to a doctor. They opened up his brain to find out what was wrong with him, and, you know, they sewed it back together, and they let him back on the street. And how the rise of Donald Trump, the presidency of Donald Trump has enabled these white beta males, the Caucasian beta males, to go on a rampage and just shoot up everything. Shoot up everything. Shoot up everything. Everything in sight. A complete nut job. I'm waiting to see the surveillance cameras when this is going on. Uh, that's what I want to see. The surveillance cameras. That's what I want to see. This can happen to anyone, you know? It, it doesn't have to be the Waffle House. It can be, um, you know, Denny's. It could be Sizzler. It could be Red Lobsters. Clam Jumpers. You're just innocent. You're just going out, getting a bite to eat. You're just, you know, going out, getting a bite to eat, and some nut job some nut job comes through the front door with semi-automatics, machine guns, well, I mean, whatever. It opened fire. And I tell people, when you go into places, and, you know, this is going to go in one ear out the other because, you know, this is America. Always look for the exit. Always know where the exit is. Always know where the exit is. That should be on your mind just as much as eating and ordering your food.
always know where the exits are. So when people like this slide through, you can get out ASAP. You you know, you hit the deck, you rolling up under chairs and tables, that's not going to help all the time. You playing dead, that's not going to help all the time. You need to know where the exits are. Since Donald Trump has been in office, the alt-right, the KKK, I mean, I, again, this, this country has always had race problems. This country has always had race problems, and um, it's no different now. People will say, well, since Donald Trump came into office, it's race problems. No, it's always been race issues. Donald Trump is the reason why these beta males are going on shooting rampages. Not taking his medicine. I'm pretty sure he was on medicine. Oh, um, uh, um, medicine. He was taking medicine. I'm pretty sure he was taking medicine. And he quit taking them. Maybe he wasn't taking medicine. Who knows? He's a Caucasian male. This is starting to be an epidemic in America. In America. And, you know, if you pay attention, you know, because this is all over the news and social media, you know, everyone knows this, right? And if you pay attention, you see Caucasian men looking real suspicious. We're embarrassed. I was in the store today looking to see, you know, are there any sales on lamb chops? I said, you know, let me go into the store and see, you know, do they got some lamb chops on sale? Go to the lamb chop aisle. Well, not the aisle, the, the section. And it's a Caucasian male standing there just looking stupid. I'm like, dude, just, you know, <laughs> get out the way. I know, you know, I mean, just, just got that dumb, embarrassed look on their face, you know, like, uh, I mean, this is what you do. When the shoe was on the other foot, you don't like it. When, when you're able to, you know, portray the black male in the media as the big bad wolf. And then you have stuff like this. And Donald Trump needs to come out and speak about this. This is ridiculous. You know they're going to politicize this. And when I say they, you mean the liberal Democrat. They want gun control. They want gun control. They want you to give up your guns while they walk around with bodyguards and security guards with pistols. Makes absolutely no sense. And I told black men, you're being attacked. You're being attacked. They're, they're, they're attacking you. What you going to do about it? What you going to do? They feel as though you're an easy target. They feel like, you know what? You know, I, I'm, I'm going a, I'm to a grab this gun and go in a Waffle House where all those N-I-G-G-R's are and shoot it up. This is disgusting, man. Where this country is now, it's, it's disgusting. Just the atmosphere, the scenery. Even when you're in a nice place, you can't enjoy yourself because you got to watch the front door because you have to make sure some nut job to come in and feel as though it's your time to be taken out. Hey, it's, it's, I just feel like you need to go now, so I'm going to come in here and lay everyone out. And, you know, this brother has to live with this for the rest of his life. The people that work in the Waffle House, I don't know if they're going to continue work, working there. I, I don't know how they can work there after that. Even the people who passed, their family, you know, you say, hey, you know, maybe you was on the phone with your mother. Maybe you was on the phone with your father. Maybe you was on the phone with your sister, you, your brother, your, your cousins, your friend. You say, I'm going to go to the Waffle House. I'll call you when I get out. You turn the news and find out it's a shooting, a massacre at the Waffle House. And then you call your friend or whoever you were talking to, it could be your cousin, relative, whoever, that was at the Waffle House and you don't get an answer on the phone. So now you're like, wow, did, did he or she get hit? It's totally disgusting. It's, it's just totally disgusting where this country is, how, you know, 
Donald Trump has enabled these Caucasian beta males to just go on a shooting rampage, and the media would not call these guys terrorists. They would not call these guys terrorists. For some odd reason, which I do know, but I'll just say for some odd reason, the you know, you cannot be called a terrorist if you are a Caucasian male. If you are a Muslim or you're from the Middle East and you do such a crime, a heinous crime, you are a terrorist. And you see why people say that this country have deep race issues. Deep race issues. Deep, deep race issues. And where we are headed now with the Civil War, it, it's, going, it, it's so bad now. It's so bad now. Pe you know, people feel very negatively about other cultures and other people. We're, we're in a society where we're just looking at people and judging them. Just looking at them and judging them, right? And so because we do that, you do have certain people that act on that judgment, whether they want to fight you, whether they want to stab you, whether they want to shoot you. You know, you know, with all this stuff going on, I just really hope black men are paying attention. I really hope black men are paying attention. We do know that the black male conservatives don't have anything to say. We know they're not going to talk about this. We do know that. We do, we do know that much. You know, and I, I just wish that the conservatives and the Republicans, you know, bring this to light to Donald Trump. Like, like hey, man, you got to start speaking on this. This, this. this, You're not saying anything. You're not saying anything. You guys need to deal with mental health issues in white America. You do. You hear black Americans on, on, on social media, not just YouTube, but on social media, talk about the mental health issues in black America. It's, 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 it's rampant. But there's also a rampant mental health issue in white America that you guys refuse, whether it's drugs, whether it's self-entitlement, or whether you're just shooting up everything. Something has to be done, and, and it's not gun control, because you're going to hear people say gun control. Remember, they're going to politicize this. Nancy, uh, what's her name? Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, a.k.a. Obama in drag, Kamala Harris, and the rest of the Democrats and the liberals are going to politicize this and say, see, we need gun control. No, what you need is to start calling these guys terrorists. And if they have psychiatric problems, take care of it. Get them off the street. How did he get a gun? How was he able, if, if his name is actually on that gun, how did he get a gun? How did he get that gun if his name is, if it comes to find out that gun is registered to him? He didn't steal the gun. It's not a throwaway. How did he get that gun? And there's videos that are going viral of black men not being able to get a gun. Not being able to get his gun. But you do have a Caucasian male that is a nut job that has access to guns. It doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, like I said, on this channel, lately I've, I've been talking about race issues because it fits, right? Well, according to me. But if you're a person and you don't talk about race issues as much, because you do have channels on YouTube, you know, and, um, you know, blogs where they always talk about race. But if you're a person that's trying to stay away from that topic and stuff like this continuously happen, you have to talk about it. You're like, listen, man, I mean, uh, come on, dude. So, you know, everything that happens 
you want to learn from it. You want to take a, you know, you want to take something from it, no matter what it is. And, and this, you have to get ready. You know, I, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do a video on the black woman that was in, you know, I guess she had some plastic spoon. She didn't want to give it up, and the cops rasped her to the ground. I'm sure you guys seen the video. It was viral, and her breast was hanging out. You know, pretty choked the lady, choked her. And what you have to understand, they're not playing with you. You you guys are playing. These people aren't playing with you. These other cultures are not playing with you. They're not playing with you. They're ready to take you out. What part of this don't you understand? It's like you're on a battlefield, right? And you're taking a rest break. You're taking a break. You're drinking your water. You're, you're eating a beef jerky, a Slim Jim. You're like, man, we've been fighting all of our lives, man. We've, we've been in America fighting. We're going to take a break. And you got, you know, you got someone that went out into the woods, far out into the woods to use the restroom. They said, I'm going to go use the restroom. Far out, I'm going to go use the restroom. I need to get away from these people. And he goes a mile out. He goes a mile out, and he sees an army coming. He sees an army coming. He runs back. He runs back and he said, listen, an army is coming. They're preparing to take you out. They're preparing to take us out. And you're just sitting there. And that's what black Americans are doing. That's what you, that's what you guys are doing. These people aren't playing with you. And again, salute to this brother, man. If, if he wouldn't have done it, it would have been even more of a mess. You know, and you have to watch out when you go anywhere now. Nowhere is safe. Nowhere is safe. Nowhere is safe. Anywhere you go, I don't care where it is. Make sure you know where the exits are, the emergency exits. I'm out. Peace.